Hello everyone and welcome to this CG Cookie training series. My name is Kent Trammell and I want to show you how Blender sculpting tools can be used to sculpt hard surface shapes. If you're watching this you probably have experience with sculpting organic shapes and you know just how valuable digital sculpting is for things like characters, monsters, trees, animals, anything organic. But it takes a little more effort to sculpt hard surface objects, not only artistically but technically as well. However, with the recent addition of dynamic topology, hard surface sculpting is much more achievable and practical. Before dynamic topology, we only had the multi-resolution modifier option for sculpting. The problem here is that hard surfaces usually have sharp edges, which require more geometry to define that hard edge. Like in polygon modeling, when you add extra geometry as holding edges, it's the same requirement when sculpting. With a multi-res modifier, we would have to subdivide our mesh many times to get the amount of geometry necessary for hard edges. And since multi-res subdivides globally, our mesh quickly becomes too dense for Blender to handle smoothly, but not dense enough for hard-edged definition. Dynamic topology solves this issue. When used properly, you won't be hindered by technical limitations, but will have the freedom as an artist to just create. The focus of this series is this sci-fi weapon. It's sleek, sexy, futuristic, something you might see in like a Mass Effect game or Halo perhaps. What makes this design great for sculpting is the hard-edged curves and angles, whereas more boxy objects are still easier to do uh, with traditional polygon modeling. Something like this that's almost uh, organically hard surfaced for an artist lends itself more to a sculpting workflow instead of polygon modeling. So a big thanks to Tim who has given us this gorgeous art to work from. Now, let's study this artwork closely before we begin. My first impression when I look at this is, wow, that's complex. Where do I start? How can I keep the surface flat? How much geometry do I need to accomplish little details like that? And this, and this area over here. How do I even get my brush inside crevices like this? Or how do I sculpt on this piece of geometry without affecting you know, this over here? These thoughts can really intimidate me and make for a frustrating sculpting adventure if I don't approach this properly. So the first thing I want to do is simplify the forms. Let's not think about the final gun with all its detail, but instead let's think about its foundational shapes that define the form. Here I've highlighted large portions of the gun to isolate and concentrate on. For one, this serves as a visual guide to break down the forms in my head, making it much easier to interpret the complexity. The highlighting also serves to break down the shape geometrically. We won't be sculpting the weapon as one piece of geometry, but instead one object for each colored region. Again, this simplifies the complexity by focusing on one object at a time. It makes it easier to sculpt around and inside the tight areas, and it will increase efficiency with dynamic topology. Besides this wonderfully polished perspective angle, Tim has gone the extra mile and provided orthographic side and top views, which I've color highlighted to correspond with the perspective view. Now the last thing I want to do before we jump into Blender is quickly outline the workflow. First, we'll create our base mesh in several pieces with a skin modifier. In my experience, this is the quickest and most intuitive way to get a usable proxy mesh to sculpt from. Second, we'll focus on the macro form of the gun as highlighted in the art, roughing out the major angles and edges. Thirdly, we'll begin to refine the detail to a mid-range level. And finally, we'll add the fine detail like construction lines, potholes and bolts, crisp edges, and other polishes to finish off the sculpt. And that's the extent of the series, just sculpting. I won't be covering retopology, matte baking, or texture baking, but in future training, I probably will. And that is all for this introduction. See you in part two.